During our Farm Basics time today, we wanted to talk just a little bit about soil phosphorus, the P1 test, and how much phosphorus farmers really need. Way to go, Brian. Half of our viewers probably just turned the <laughs> dial because they said, oh no, this is going to be snooze <laughs> yep. fest here. We're talking about fertilizer and specific little things on soil tests. Come yep. on. I mean, here's, it's got to be more entertaining than that. <laughs> here, here's the thing. If you're a non-farmer, <laughs> we really want you to watch this too because phosphorus is one of the most important things that a crop needs. If you look at the soybean plant, it's probably number one. If you look at the corn plant, it's probably number two behind nitrogen. Phosphorus is super important, and we wanted to talk today how, quite frankly, a lot of farmers are getting horrible advice as far as how much phosphorus they really need. When you come to a lawn or a garden, it's the same thing. We talk about crops. It's any plant at all, any plant, needs some phosphorus. It's a really big thing and it's probably the second largest nutrient needed in terms of the amount of pounds that it takes to raise any kind of plant. So phosphorus is a really big deal. So the first thing you need to do is understand what you're working with in the soil that you've got. So you need to do some soil testing down to a depth where your roots are realistically going to be pretty big. So if you've got a crop that puts most of its roots out in the top six inches, that's where you really want to be looking at for how much phosphorus you've got there. Now on the phosphorus tests on soil tests, there's some different tests that can be run depending on what soil you have. Yeah, if you have lower pH soil, we think the Bray tests are a little more accurate. And if you have higher pH soils, we think the Olsen test is a little bit more accurate. The Olsen test measures how much available phosphorus there is in soil. The Bray tests, there are actually two of them. The P1 test, the weak Bray, that tells you how much is available in soil. And the P2 test tells you the total soil phosphorus, not just what's available, total what's in the soil. Well, if you don't know if you've got a high pH or a low pH, you just need to talk to your soil lab and say, look, run the pH test first. If I've got a high pH test, I want the Olsen test. Or if the lab says, well, we're going to do it all at the same time, just say, look, just run them both. So I kind of have an idea and then I can see. So with this soil testing with phosphorus, let's make it real simple for you. The P1 test or the Olsen test, both of the available soil phosphorus tests, if let's say for example, a university was to raise their standard recommendation from 10 or 15 up to 20 parts per million, how many pounds per acre really is that, Darren? Well, they would be moving in the right <laughs> direction. That, this is the whole thing, and Brian's kind of setting me up. The recommendations that are out there right now are very conservative, and therefore below average yields, which really no farmer is shooting for and no gardener is shooting for. I mean, do you want an ear of sweet corn in your garden that's four or five inches long? No. You want one that's a foot long, and you want 20 kernels around. You know, you want something nice. And it's the same thing for farmers out in their fields. They want to raise a really nice crop. They don't want to raise an average or below average crop. Okay, so, so get back to my question. What's the parts per million and how do you convert <laughs> that to pounds per acre? So what you need to do when you're looking at your soil test and you've got parts per million, and let's say you're doing a six inch soil sample because that's the most common soil samples run. In three inches of soil across a whole acre, it weighs roughly a million pounds. If you skimmed all the soil off an acre, at a three inch depth, it would weigh about a million pounds. So a six inch sample represents two million pounds of soil. So if you're looking at a parts per million on your phosphorus soil test, you just take that parts per million times two to get pounds per acre in six inches of soil. So if your soil test, like Brian said, had 20 parts per million, now you've got 20 times two is 40 pounds per acre that you're working with. Now, if you were going to plant, say, 15,000 seeds of corn out in a field and you're shooting for 100 bushel corn, you might have barely enough. But if you're gonna plant 30,000 corn seeds per acre and shoot for 200 plus bushel corn, that is not going to be enough. For 200 bushel corn, just the grain alone takes 76 pounds of phosphorus out of the soil. Just the grain alone. So how in the world would 20 parts per million, that's 40 pounds per acre, ever be enough? Well, then you gotta figure the stover in there too. So for 200 bushel corn, that crop is going to remove from the soil over 100 pounds of actual phosphorus. So we've got to have more. Now here's the thing in soils, when you have organic matter or residue, like let's say any of these stalks, 
You look at some of these stalks that are sitting out here in the field, as these things break down and decay, they will release a little bit of phosphorus. It doesn't amount to a tremendous amount, but it's some. So you gotta look at what's already there and in the soil available, plus some of this residue that's breaking down. But still, if you've only got 20 parts per million in your soil, that's not cutting it. I mean, I, I can't stand that. I, I want 50 parts per million available this year minimum if I'm gonna raise 200 bushel corn. And you know what? My goal five years from now is 300 bushel corn. So I gotta start working my way up rather than just maintaining or working my way down. So phosphorus is very important no matter what plant you're trying to raise, whether it's a garden, a lawn, or a crop. Get that phosphorus soil tested and then make sure you're getting enough phosphorus out there to get the year started. And the big thing that we wanted to stress today, if you're a farmer or a non-farmer, we wanted you to understand a lot of people are really conservative in their phosphorus recommendations. And quite frankly, if you want a, a an above average crop or way above average crop, you're gonna have to have more phosphorus out there than what the standard recommendation is for most universities. Well, one way you can get more phosphorus for free in your fields is keeping weeds out of there so the weeds don't rob that phosphorus. We'll show you how to kill this tough weed later in the show.